Now, I told you we would keep molecular orbital theory simple by only dealing with diatomic molecules or diatomic ions that are homonuclear. And now I'm throwing at you polyatomic molecules and MO th theory. We won't ever have to draw these MO diagrams for anything with more than two atoms. But we will see molecular orbital theory play out. Um, why would this play out? When we were able to draw more than one resonance structure, let's say SO2, for example, had these two resonance structures. We could have the single bond on the left, the double bond on the right, or we could have the double bond on the left and the single bond on the right. Okay, now this is Lewis theory here, right? We knew that it was a merging of those two things. What we're going to see in this lesson is how it can be this and this merge together as a hybrid of those two things, okay? We're going to mix, we're not going to, how do we word the word? Um, yeah, kind of they took the picture of the two dogs and you've got a dog that's kind of a mix of the two. This is not the full story. This is not the full story, but the whole molecule together is the full story. So we're really going to be looking at these two electrons and these two electrons that look like they're moving back and forth between those two spots and see that they're really smeared out over the whole molecule and therefore we're talking about molecular orbital theory, a bonding that stretches across the entire molecule. Now for our example, okay, and you can do this for polyatomic ions or polyatomic molecules, okay, we're going to uh, focus on O3. Now O3 is just like SO2, but we'd seen that structure before, so that's why I chose it. For, um, for O3, okay, now we have three oxygen atoms, okay, we have the same number of valence electrons, six times three, we have 18 electrons to work with, we were following our rules, we'd start with single bonds, two, four, go to the outside and do six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, I have to stop, and then I know that I can take these two and shift them in and make my central oxygen happy. Now, if I can do it like this, I can also do its resonance, I mean, yeah, its resonance structure, which would be the single bond here and the double bond here. Same exact structure. It looks like it's just flipped, but we know these two together depict the full molecule of O3, ozone. All right, so what's happening here? If we look at our central atom, what does our central atom have? And let's just focus on this one. When we thought about valence bond theory, we had this central atom with one, two, three legs. What's a hybridization with three legs? It's sp2. So there's an sp2, there's an sp2, and there's an sp2. We have our three sp2s, okay? That's what sits on that central oxygen. Now, we form a sigma bond by overlapping with a 2p orbital of that oxygen there, okay? So we've got this oxygen, this is the 2p of this oxygen forming a sigma bond there, a head-on overlap, all right? We've got this one with a lone pair, and we have this third one forming a sigma bond with this oxygen, okay? So I have my oxygen, and this is a 2p orbital overlapping. That's forming the sigma, but remember the other one is a pi bond. Where is that pi bond coming from? Well, there is a sideways overlap of a p orbital on this and on this. We only use two of those p orbitals. So there's one coming out and in towards the board. Now it's going to be very hard for me to draw this in this direction, so I'm going to try using a different color marker to do so. So I have got a p orbital coming out at me and back behind the plane or out at you and back behind the plane, and out at us and back behind the plane. And these things could sideways overlap to form my pi bond, and that would be my pi bond there. My picture shows a pi bond here on this one, and on this one I would have been doing the pi bond over here. But the reality is that there is a p orbital coming out of this plane and back towards you and away from you, on all three of these atoms. And my next image will show this much better than I can draw with my marker, okay? 
So we did, we looked at the overlap, that's all that said there, sorry. We will look at the overlapping orbitals to see how they come together to represent this molecule, which we did, okay. We got our sigma framework, a sigma and a sigma, that's in green. We've got our pi framework, that's our pi bond in, in pink. And we could have done that double bond here, or we could have done that double bond here. And if we, uh, and that represents our two things here. All right, so this is actually taken this molecule and kind of turned it on its side. If we take this molecule and turn it on its side, we've got our oxygens kind of more in the plane, okay? And my P's that it can overlap, the ones that I've done in pink here are above and below the plane. And these that are above, the P part, the P lobes that are above can all join together and form a pi framework and it's High, it is over the entire molecule and below, above and below there. So that's the pi. It's above and below the nuclei of my three oxygen atoms. Okay. And there were two electrons, just these two, that can run anywhere in that space that they want to. So they're not just here and then here and then here and then here. Those two electrons can run anywhere into that area that I've colored in green. And in the image on the screen is red and blue. That red and blue is the pi's forming by three p orbitals overlapping rather than just two. So that extra p orbital, the extra P here, here, and here are making that space that we see there, and those two electrons can spread out anywhere over there, and that's a delocalized molecular orbital. Delocalized means it is not over just between two atoms. It is not just between these two. It is a P orbital on all three of these, the P orbital on all three of these overlapping their space and the two measly electrons getting to be anywhere in that space. That's what a delocalized molecular orbital is all about. Okay, so here's the definition of a delocalized molecular orbital. Orbitals which are not confined between two atoms. Okay and to adjacent atoms for that matter, okay? They're not between just two adjacent atoms, but actually extend over three or more atoms. And in this case, it were, was three, okay? And the way you determine which one it is, is you think about the electrons that are moving in our Lewis structures, in our resonance structures, wherever those two electrons are moving to and are touching, those are the atoms that, tho that molecular orbital, that delocalized molecular orbital can extend over. All right, now we're going to do it and look at it for benzene. We have a picture there. I'm going to start with drawing a Lewis structure for benzene. We've got the six carbon atoms, okay? And we've got alternating, and I'm just going straight to the Lewis structure, alternating single and double bonds. And then we have the hydrogens all around that. And this is just one of two resonance structures that I can draw. The other resonance structure would have all the carbons in exactly the same place. Now we've done this before, right? But the alternating double and single bonds would be opposite, okay? These two together, what have I done? Ah, missed it up there. Double single, double single, double single. So there is my double single, double single, all going around, okay? Now, these are my resonance structures. I know that neither one of them is a good depiction. I don't have long bonds and short bonds on this molecule. I actually have all the same bonds and they're about equivalent to a bond and a half between a carbon and a carbon. So what is really happening? It's these six electrons that we see as being here and then moving to here. Those six electrons, and I'm going to circle them, two, four, six, the ones that can be moving about are the ones that are going to be involved in the delocalized molecular orbital. So let's turn to the screen and see what's going on here. Each carbon has uh, three bonds, bonded atoms to it. So this is an sp2 hybridization on that carbon. Now that's not valence, that's valence bond theory, right? sp2. This is not where we're looking at the delocalized MO. This is still a thinking about it in terms of valence bond theory. But if these are all sp2s, there is another p 
orbital coming out of and going back behind the board. So it's coming out at you and going back behind the paper. Coming out at you, going back behind the paper. Coming out at you, going back behind the paper. All the way around here. Well, if we take this molecule and we tilt it over on its side, here are all those p orbitals that I tried to draw. The p's that were coming out of Oops, that's the same guy as that, all right? The P's going all around here. These are the P orbitals. And all the P orbitals are, are going to overlap, so we end up with a ring above, okay? A big space above and a big space below. And that's where those six electrons can run around, all right? Those six electrons are delocalized over the entire area above and below the ring. And that is why very often, they show this molecule not like this and this, but very often it is abbreviated with a hexagon with a circle in it. Say so it's not really single and double bonds, but those six electrons can be anywhere in the P framework that we have. So that is a delocalized um, molecular orbital. When will you have them? Anytime you can draw resonance structures. Anytime you can draw resonance structures, which I've done here, and a pair of electrons are in different locations, rather than thinking of them here and thinking of them here, know that whatever atoms that those two electrons are touching in all of your resonance structures, those atoms are all involved in a delocalized molecular orbital over that molecule, and those electrons can run around anywhere in the space of that molecular orbital. So they're not here and here, they're anywhere within that um, area. So if you can draw a resin structure, it is going to happen. And that's really all you need to know about delocalized molecular orbital theories across more than two atoms. We won't do molecular orbital diagrams and put electrons in. We just are conceptually what's happening to form a space where a couple electrons can move about in a large area.